Okay, as a segue, as uh, Aaron would say, as a segue from Hart, I remember the first day as an intern, 1969, June. You don't want to go to Merge in the middle of June. First day as an intern, we, we were old school, like we were all together in medical school, and uh, no one wanted to be an Merge doc, right? Because uh, you never take care of a patient. Hello. I mean, you're a doctor, right? So let Alvi go. You know, let Alvi be a Merge doc. So I was the first day of Merge, and I'll never forget the segue to your hard, hard thing. I'm sitting in the room reading a book, quiet, not bothering anybody, right? And I got a nurse coming in the middle of the room and she goes like this. So I walk into this other room and there's this large Italian man sweating and grabbing his chest, no shirt on. In my head I said, oh my God, he's having a heart attack, someone call a doctor. <laughs> and then I realized I'm the doctor. First time I ever sewed up a guy, a big truck driver, he says, Doc, can you sew it up? I says, well, I, was, I didn't tell him I sewed up faucets before, but I, I sew, I, I get, the nurse says, what size glove do you want? I, I said, the, the usual. <laughs> she, so I, size seven, that fits, it's fine. Uh, what uh, uh, xylocaine do you want? Mm, the usual, <laughs> 3%, okay. You want epinephrine or epinephrine? That I knew, no epinephrine, it's fine, to the near finger. So I sold this guy up. He said, nice job, Doc. He walked out. First person I ever sold up in my life. That's what being a doctor is all about. It was exciting. I never fell asleep the first 24 hours. How could I sleep? My cortisol was on the roof. I, I, I can't sleep. I mean, I was, I was all excited about what's next, what's next. They brought a little girl in with a fractured leg. Best hospital in the world across the road. And just my little girl, 2 o'clock in the morning, has a fractured leg. I wanted to carry her myself across from Sinai to, to sick kids. I said, you got to break call the guy up, he says to me and Bucky, Bucky put up, um, Buck, we called the, the staff man, he says, put up a, a sling, a, a Singapore sling, or come. I said, Bucky, what's a sling, what's a sling? Bucky said, I'm a dentist, well, I'm doing uh, neurology, what do I know? We went to the library, honest to God, we went to the library, looked at a picture of this sling to put up the child, stretched it, did a perfect job. My, next day, the staff man says, best job I've ever seen. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes you've got to fake it till you make it. And, and when you're a doc, you know, uh, pretty big honor, pretty big honor. And so I'm here really tonight to kind of just talk. I never know where it goes. Um, you want to put the first slide up? I, I, machines and me, people I'm okay with, machines. <laughs> so really, the next slide's fine. Okay, this is not that complicated. Really, it isn't, it isn't really. Because remember what, she, what was just heard about cholesterol? So take six little carbons together, hook them together. Now take, that's a package, like a little group, like glucose, okay? Hook 27 of them together, you've got cholesterol. So that, that goes in the top, okay? So cholesterol is 27 carbons, and this is 18 carbons. You keep chopping carbons off, and it goes through the sex hormones. So if you wanted to think of, let me see, pregnenolone? Well, it's a nice hormone to have, but put it through your skin, not orally. Uh, pregnenolone, DHEA, um, uh, progesterone, the forgotten hormone. I hope to be the guy, remember it, 100 years from now, that fell in love with progesterone, not estrogen. But, but yes, progesterone is real progesterone, and that's where the confusion is with Doc's minds, and I'll show you why they're confused. Hormones, transdermally, are good for your heart. Real hormones, not synthetic, not through the liver, and not from a horse. I had a patient tell me what the GP said, well, what could be more natural than a horse's urine? I said, yeah, I said, I said, yeah if you're running six furlongs of woodbine, it's probably okay. I said, a 1,200-pound horse, we, and we swallowed it in 1969. The standard was Permanent and Prevera, the golden standard of HRT. And the reason we swallowed it, we were students. We were, we were studying. We just went out into the world and we, we practiced, and it seemed like a good idea. The guy who wrote the book, uh, Young Forever, Seemed like a good book, hormones. Uh, mind you, if you ever try to publish that book now, he'd be, feminists would kill him. They got, when we get older, they get, it wasn't, so anyway, the idea came for Premarin to make a big drug company. He said, well, let's give hormones to women. Next slide, I'll get back to that. What people think is that people talk about hormones and menopause. Hormones happen every day of your life every hour of your life, every day of your cycle changes. So women are complicated. <laughs> <I'll> be... 
you only have a small idea. <laughs> you have a, no idea. Guys, guys, honest to God. Women tell me in 1994, after Carol and I took our walk to kind of find my soul again, when I was the chief of OBS and Gaini, I took, we took, I was meditating. You know, meditation is like, you know, kind of watching the movement of your own stars. I came out of meditation, I said, Carol, my, my beautiful wife, Carol, I said, Carol, I think I know what we're supposed to do from now on, bioidentical hormones. And I was reading Eckhart Tolle, and I was reading The Now Moment, and I was reading about bioidentical hormones, and Christine Northrup, and John Lee, the late John, great John Lee. And it came to me during meditation, you know, the Talmud says you should do in the second half of your life what you learned in the first half of your life. And so when I came back in 1994, it's like my son said when he, when he wrote a play, he wrote a play about cancer. And he said, after his surgery, he grew a new pair of eyes. Very, very poetic. My son has an old soul. And what happened to me and Carol really was that. We're allopathically trained, registered nurse, medical doctor, come back. Uh, we saw six patients the first day we came back, took six months off. I went for a walk on Tuesday morning. I, I worked the whole weekend. It was unbelievably difficult. Came back on Tuesday morning and Carol said we're going for a walk. And we didn't come back for six months. And, and well, walking with Carol's great. <laughs> Have you seen Carol? Um, hormones. Most women think that hormones have to do with menopause. It doesn't. It really doesn't. When you're 30, when you're 12, when you're 15, Mar there's a guy named Mario going to write an article about he's ticked that his three-year-old daughter is going to get her period at 10.5 years of age. That what was the time when I graduated in medical school? 13.5 was the menarch. Why was this? Estrogen dominance. We have polluted our earth. Estrogen. And, and we have to undo it. And we can. We can, because doctors are beginning to show up. In the States, they're beginning to take courses, anti-aging courses. Bioidentical hormones are good for you, and good on FemMed. FemMed picked up the ball and said, you know what? You want a double-blind placebo study? They do a double-blind placebo study. Out comes in the urine. What comes out in the urine? Safe estrogen. Well, safe estrogen? Estriol of pregnancy. Estriol, the third estrogen of pregnancy, safe estrogen. Three estrogens, estrone, estradiol, and estriol. Okay, E1, E2, strong. Estriol, weak, and, and protects you from the other two. So the combination thereof, of those three, is balance, balance. What happens in women in PMS is this. Estrogen rises, good name of a book, Estrogen Rising. <laughs> I think someone wrote this. I think Jocelyn, I think Jocelyn, yeah, I think, I think, I'm, I think she wrote it. Um, if you're a young woman and you're having your periods, and you, you know, estrogen rises and, and it expands, so the wall of the uterus gets thicker, so yin and yang, so estrogen says grow, okay, so the lining gets thicker, good, the estrogen starts to rise, and as the estrogen rises, it rises what's called the threshold. The threshold, once it goes above the threshold, the bleeding stops. So estrogen rises, goes up to what the maximum of that person's maximum is. So let's say you're tall and thin at a late menarche, Maybe uh, estrogen you're very sensitive to, or you're short and you get an er early menarch. Maybe estrogen you can handle a lot. So everybody's body type, everybody's genetics, everybody's history, karma, love life, life, everything is, is involved with hormones every, time, every moment of your day. So if you have a positive outlook on life, I think you're going to you know, be positive with people. You're going to look for positive people. They're going to look for positive in you. And all of a sudden, you got someone else's attention because now you're hooked into someone's karma. Now you're hooked into someone's energy. And energy is the super future of hormones. And we, we, we know very little about real, maybe future medicine, all about energy. As estrogen rises, it goes to the top and the brain says, whoa, 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 it's all we can handle. And the brain says to the ovary, okay, now release progesterone. So the estrogen gets lining thick, Along comes progesterone, everybody says, girls, big sisters here, relax, cool down, calm down, go to sleep, make love, because we got, we got to wait two weeks, exactly two weeks. And what progesterone does, it calms down and protects, protects, P, protects the uterus from estrogen dominance. You need estrogen, yeah, but progesterone comes along and says, whoa, just, just relax a bit and wait, 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 nothing happening, two weeks go by, menstruation regularity, bang, bang, bang. What happens when things go off is PMS. Estrogen rising goes to the top and brain says to the ovary, uh, 
progesterone, please. And over is a little tired, a little stressed. Does not give progesterone, so the estrogen rises above your comfort zone. Now the body says, whoa, the estrogen's too high. Up goes the cortisol. Cortisol, <sighs> anxiety, irritability, insomnia, water retention, breast pain, estrogen dominance. 35 on, estrogen dominance. And the mistake the doctors made was drugs. And real hormones, progesterone is all that was needed. Even in a young teenager, it's got irregular periods, you put her on the birth control pill, you put an ovary that's not working well to sleep. Uh, that's it, nothing. So, I mean, maybe birth control pills are okay for a short time if you're having heavy periods or, or people with ovarian cancer. Or there are indications for birth, but everything has to be thought about individually. But progesterone cream, a dream, absolutely a dream. And FemMeds come along and said, okay, you know what? Not everybody can get the hormones. How do I live my life so I can, so I can be healthy? Breast health, indole 3 carbonyl, indole 3 carbonyl, what is it? Well, it happens to be the one thing that turns estrone, you know, the two big girls that are in the liver, saying like ping pong balls, back and forth, back and forth. Along comes an antioxidant that says, okay, out, out of the body is estriol. So the whole metabolism that you saw is a constant flow. And the constant flow kind of gets like an orchestra. So every instrument's playing, and all of a sudden, one instrument stops playing, progesterone. Uh, tired this month, can't, so now cortisol's high, Stress is high, estrogen's high, and all of a sudden the body's on alert, stressed. It's like a it just fight, 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 sympathetic nervous system. So PMS is estrogen dominance. Breast health, makes sense. Take something that'll take your own estrogen, try and bring your own estrogen out, fiber to the bowel or estrogen metabolism. Estrogen metabolism is very complicated actually, but really simplified is, is take a supplement that'll help get rid of your estrogen faster. Um, next one. We kind of talked, okay, can you go to the one where, the, where, where there's a slide with all graphs? Let's keep going. We'll come back. A, okay, oh, oh, back, 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 that way, that way. Okay, hold on, that, that's a good one, hold on. That one, okay. What we did wrong. Well, we didn't do anything wrong, really. We were following what we were supposed to do. HRT, back in the, in the 50, when I graduated in 69, that's what we were supposed to do. And here's what happened in the JAMA study. And here's where you're going to know more in 10 minutes than the physician has tried to understand regarding hormones. Because here's what really happened. 18,606 women did a double-blind placebo study. Double-blind placebo study means when you walk out the door, you either get a tablet of, of, of Premer and Provera or you, or you get nothing. Okay? Well, the study was supposed to last for seven and a half years. But it was stopped at five years. Well, how can, it, how can you stop a study? And that's what got everybody's attention. So in bad comes good. So why did everybody's attention get stopped? Because what happened is the risk factor of taking oral synthetic progestin plus oral estrogen was higher incidence of having heart attacks and strokes than the person taking the placebo. And it's against the law to give someone knowingly that it's going to hurt them. So it was stopped. And that's why it wasn't under the carpet, it wasn't hidden. It was open to everybody. And there was lots of studies before this that gave us a heads up, what are we talking, we're giving synthetic progesterone, we should give natural progesterone. The problem is drug companies who have money, and now FemMed, good on them, because they did a study, double-blind placebo study, with human beings using indole 3 carbonyl. Scientific. But uh, doctors are saying, well, what is this indole 3 carbonyl? My friend of 55 years said, Alvi, you know that red yeast rice you told me to take? I took it for two weeks before my doctor was giving me a prescription for Crestor. My cholesterol will drop right down. That's an amazing, Shelly. I told you how many years ago. He said, also that CoQ10 stuff. That works too. I said, Shelly, I said, been telling you for 20 years. He says, yeah, but I just tried it. Because this, this, this is the mindset. These are very, very well. They say, the allopathic world saved my son's life. and saved my, So the allopathic world, brilliant. But they have to step back and say, when are drugs indicated? God forbid, something like cancer or treatment surgery. And when can you think, how can I mimic the body's hormones? Mimic hormones. Match mother nature. Try and do the right thing. Do the right thing. Listen to the patient, number one. Number two, really care about the patient, number two. And number three, individualize. Uh, maybe this person doesn't need any, any hormones. Maybe just need some water, maybe some exercise. Uh, maybe their home situation I can't change. But I can do one thing. I can care about them while they're in front of me.
And so what we try and do is learn. You know, every day of my life, a patient brings something to me and teaches me. It's the lecturer and the, the listener that makes the teaching. Okay? It, that's where the teaching comes from. So what happened? Next, next slide. Uh, okay. We did, so, Premarin, so what happened is they gave Premarin to women, right? Here's Premarin, here's estrogen. They all had flushes went away. But they came back with a uterine cancer. Uterine cancer, they said, well, could this be from the estrogen? You said, yeah, it's probably 8 to 15 times increased uterine cancer. probably is from the Premarin. So that now they said, now, okay, we'll give you Provera, synthetic progestin. The worst idea ever because Provera is worse than estrogen. Provera is not real progesterone and does the opposite to the, to the vessels that progesterone. Progesterone relaxes, progestin contracts. Progestin covers all, all the, progesterone just kind of watches over everybody. They did a study in the early 19, 1997, Megala, and they took 18 monkeys and they divided into two. This side, whole hysterectomy, this side, oh, both sides had hysterectomy, ovaries, everything out. They gave this side Premarin, this side Premarin, this side progesterone, this side Provera. Then they gave a vasospastic drug to both groups, thrombopastin A, to cause a heart attack. Vessel contract. Every monkey that had Provera needed a reversing drug to protect the monkey's life, but not one of the ones on progesterone needed a reversing drug. Real progesterone, God's own progesterone, is real, and it looks a lot different than Provera. The problem is you have to have someone bright enough to think of how do you match nature. First of all, don't go first pass through the liver if you can help it. Okay, next one, please. Okay, here, could you have a pointer? You're going to see how, okay. Well, I just told you this. So what happened is they had, they got people's attention all of a sudden. You know, my mother passed away April 27th, 1985, like yesterday. I can see blood trickling down the corner of her mouth. Carol stayed with her for two weeks while she was in a coma. She fought breast cancer for 11 years. And then when I lost her, I thought to myself, I've got to do something about this. And then so thinking really hard that that's someone in front of you is someone's mother, someone's sister, someone's aunt, someone's cousin. Uh, whether you're blood or not, that's someone who's loved somebody, and that, that, that somebody's looking for you for advice. Uh, you better pay attention. And so you got to understand that suddenly these, these parameters popped up in the grid, and it wasn't a surprise, but it was a shock. But doctors overreacted to this because in the islands where people have high blood pressure, nephrotic syndrome, and you suddenly stop their estrogen that you've been on for five years and you take it out of their body, their vessels can heart attack right away, stroke right away, because hormones, estrogen, transdermal progesterone, really do prolong life. There's a book by Morgenthaler, Abraham Morgenthaler just wrote a book from Harvard. You always want to throw in a guy from Harvard when you're giving a talk. It always makes you sound like you went to Harvard. <laughs> But since this guy wrote the art, wrote a book, he wrote a book this thick. Testosterone forever. Well, hello, hello, testosterone forever. What about female hormones? The guy, the last guy that got the Nobel Prize was methyl testosterone in the 40s, old boys club, right? And methyl testosterone is not really, you know what? It's not that great. But you need it. Susan Rako says it's okay sometimes. But, but Jonathan Wright comes along and says, wait a minute, shouldn't we be t using estrone 10%, estradiol 10%, and estriol 80%, the exact ratio that is circulating in your blood, why don't we just give that to the patient? Transmucosa, transvaginal, transdermal, avoid first pass through the liver. Well, hello, it's just, it makes common sense. You give back hormones, there's a book this thick on hormones from Europe, Belgium, three generations of doctors, Hertach, probably saying it wrong, Hertach, something like that. And, and then this is three generations of doctors, his father's father used to give uh, extracts of um, adrenal and treat uh, uh, adrenal fatigue and treat, uh, treat uh, Addison syndrome. Then an endocrine came along, prescription for, it was all over. Endocrine became, organal therapy became endocrine. Endocrine became a controlled kind of, this TSH, for example. I'll give you an example of what the, how the endocrine mind works. Okay, TSH, uh, thyroid stimulating hormone is 0. 0.5 to 5. That's normal. Well, first of all, who went for the tests to get normal? Probably people who were hypothyroid in the first place. 
uh, who, who else would want to check their thyroid but people who are probably hypothyroid. It's like your class, you know which specialty each guy was going into before they went into the specialty, if you look at the pictures. So if you look at the thyroid, if you look at the thyroid range, 0.5 to 5 is huge. And they say that's normal. So someone who's got a 4 TSH, that means the brain is saying, hello, hello, uh, and louder and louder, the higher the TSH, the less the brain is getting thyroid. So you're telling me that a person's got a 4.5 TSH, and this woman over here has a 0.5 TSH, and they're both normal? Uh, the woman who's got 4.55 weighs 12 pounds more than the person who's got 0.5. Why wouldn't you want your thyroid to be that efficient? Why would you want to take iodine? Iodine prevents breast cancer. Iodine helps all kinds of things. Iodine is terrific for thyroid, okay? Selenium, Brazilian nuts have selenium too. So there's a lot more things than doctors can think of, but these are rules and regulations, okay? So people have to start saying back up and say, whoa, here's a lady with a 4.5 TSH, maybe I can give her some thyroid, because she's gonna need it anyway, now. Because even a, a clinical clerk in, in, in medicine would say, this woman's got dry skin, dry hair, constipated, overweight, underactive thyroid but you gotta wait, wait, wait until it's so obvious that the person's been like that for five, six years. Why? You don't have to. If, you, if it's between you and the patient and you, t and you tell the college, well, this is the symptoms, all the symptoms, it's a matter of another month or two before you need, the, she's taking supplements anyway, why can't I give her thyroid? That's where the, the rules come in. And that's the problem with physicians and every the pharmacist too. You've got these rules. And okay, so not breaking rules, you're just kind of maybe having a different view of them. Next slide. Oh. Bless you. Herbs, pomegranates. Good studies in Israel on pomegranates. Uh, lowers blood pressure. Nice, very nice. And Israel studies, on, and, and also good for, for uh, hot flushes, which, by, by the way, it, it's very hot in here. And there's 613 seeds in a pomegranate. How do you like that? Actually, that's the number of mitzvahs there are in the Torah, 613 seeds. Someone actually counted them. Next slide. Uh, next one. Next one. Breast cancer. Okay, so does estrogen cause breast cancer? Kind of that's why I'm kind of giving this talk. Well, it certainly seems the earlier you get your period or the later you have your period or the more irregular your periods are. Remember I talked about regularity of periods? Well, which is the hormone that causes regularity of periods? progesterone. When people had five pregnancies, progesterone and estriol were the main hormones. Those were the protective hormones. From, from now we replace that with what? Birth control pills and synthetic progestin. We've created an estrogen dominant society. And we have to pull back and say, whoa, this has to be looked at again. But you have to have more physicians giving out prescriptions for natural progesterone. But it'll happen. Because in the States it's happening already. And once it starts to happen, allopathic doctors take courses on this stuff, anti-aging stuff, Watch what happens. They'll be starting to talk about supplements, CoQ10, breast health, uh, energy, fiber. They'll start to look at all these stuff. It's 1,200 different slides, all about natural stuff. Uh, next one. Uh, that's good. There's a, there's a lot of studies. Weight, of course, weight is, is the guy who did the study on birth control pills uh, found out that it, the more weight you have, estrone is the hormone of fat. Remember I told you the three estrogens, E1, E2, E3? The one that's in fat is estrone, and that's the most cancer permissive of all of them. So obviously, if you exercise, take water, work out, much less chance of having. But if you work out for, I think, three hours a week aerobics, you've got a 50% decreased chance of breast cancer in your lifetime, just three hours of exercise alone, and water. Throw in half your body weight, by the way. Half your body weight in pounds equals the ounces of water you should drink every day. Half your body weight in pounds, ounces of water. And so keep drinking water. You can't possibly drink enough water. It's like cleaning out everything of your liver. And liver is very important. Liver, and we're going to show you why liver is so important. Next slide. You know, I got to either be taller or I got to stand back. Next one, please. We're looking into things like thermography. I had a lady come into my office eight years ago. She's now our friend in Aruba. She came in. She says, Dr. Petal, I want to have some hormones. I said, okay, um, tell me a little bit more. She said, well, I had a mammogram, everything's fine. I said, yeah, well, you know, I'm kind of funny, but if I give hormones, I do like to do an examination of, of breast. And I don't know if I'm gonna have you up here, Bryce, or not to show you a proper breast examination, but I think we have to, yeah. So, so yeah. Here, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So, so yeah. So it, when you have a proper breast exam, I do. I do work out, you know. I know. I can see. <laughs> so the first thing is you, pendulous. It, not bad, but just relax. <laughs> this is my talk. <laughs> Uh, okay, all kidding aside, I taught naturopaths how to do breast examination. Self-examination, very important, very serious stuff, really, honestly is. And a woman, during your menses, is the time to examine your breasts because that's the time your breasts are the smallest. The outside of the breast has to be round, and the woman has to look in the mirror and basically look in the mirror and see that it's round. If there, God forbid, puh, that there's a line or a dent, pick your hands above your head, and if you put your hands up, what happens is the indentation gets deeper. Cancer, God forbid, if this room is a, is a breast, will pull like a tentacle inward. So an indentation or an irregularity in the side of the breast accentuates when you put your hands up. So put your hands back down. Okay. And so now he, she knows her, what her breasts look like. She looks in the mirror. One side. What's that? <laughs> you got to look in the mirror and say, okay, one breast might be a little bigger. The nipple line has to be right. If all of a sudden one nipple is retracting, not good, of course, and you got to go to your doctor. So this lady, when I, the next part of the examination is I do the, I put the breast up on a table like that and I go across and the woman will do this each month during the menses, the woman will do it during her menses, but I'll do it that time. So she gets to know, uh, same as last month. What Feel if I start enjoying it? Uh, <laughs> I call Carol. <laughs> we have a term for this called uh, glass, glass cutters. Have, yeah? You heard of that term? No, I mean. It's in the cold, it gets really cold and the nipples get a little hard. <laughs> Thermography is based on, on cold. That's what it's actually. That's, actually, that's where I was going. I know, I understand, exactly. I understand. That was my segue, by I, the way. You, uh, going into thermograms. Exactly. Okay, well, actually, he's got a good point. Thermograms, a woman stands in front of a mirror, she heats the mirror, and then she puts her hand in cold water, and what happens is the breasts get colder, different color. So when I examined this woman, I told you this eight years ago, she had a mass at two o'clock position of her left breast, mammogram was negative. But I don't like to feel this mass at all. So when you, then when you lie the patient down, first of all, the other thing you do is you put under the axilla, you put your finger under the axilla, supraclavicular and lymph nodes here, and well, then the patient lies down. Now let's say, God forbid, that, that I felt a mass, uh, then after the person sits up, I have them lie down. Here's the reason, watch. If a three o'clock mass is a cancer mass, and I feel a cancer mass, and then if I put the patient in a leg down position, the mass will still be at three o'clock. It won't move, it's stuck. But a benign mass would move to a different position. Thank you. And so what I did with this lady, so what I did with this lady was I put her down in, in a lying down position and the two o'clock mass was still at two o'clock and it was still like a rock and I still didn't like it, so we did a thermogram. Didn't tell the thermography people who were up there, didn't tell them anything. I said, my buddy does thermography, a lady will stand with you in the mirror, does a thermography and the only spot on the two breasts that is really hot, only one spot, two o'clock left breast. Biopsy, cancer. Lumpectomy, she's still alive, that's it. That doesn't mean, no, 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 that, no, that doesn't mean the thermography is perfect and mammography is not good. It means that the more information you can get, you can't get enough information about, and self-examination is extremely important. The idiot who wrote the article about not examining your own breast, absolute nonsense. Because most patients who are, they know their own breasts. And so when patients, after they do a proper examination, they thank you for doing a proper examination. So that's, that's a, a heads up. We've done, we've done this. Oh, estrogen receptor, oh, okay, next one. Okay, this slide's a good slide. Okay, liver. I once went to a lecture, honest to God, the guy was an old Jewish guy, Rappaport, I'll never forget this as long as I live. So he's in, he's in the room and he finishes the lecture and he thinks he's a really funny guy, he's not that funny. And he finishes the lecture about liver and he says, and so when you go home to see your wife, you'll say, how is your liver, lover? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and this is without a group that got a lot of laughs, our group, you know. But, but, I can remember being in the auditorium, and that's how important the liver is. And so what FemMed has done, remember I told you about cholesterol, 27 carbons? Well, you don't want fat, androstenedione, because that'll feed estrone into breast cancer, estrone sulfate. So that whole vicious cycle, you want to kind of avert that. So how do you avert that? Well, cholesterol has nice other pathways to go to. It can go down other ways. Other, yeah, and Jonathan Wright says you have to go through hell before you get to heaven because estrogen metabolism has several different ways you can go, but you want to nudge it to the right side. So the first thing you got to realize is progesterone, there's all kinds of studies, but 
See estrogen? You need it, about 10% of your blood. Estradiol, you need about 10%. Estriol, the weak estrogen, the estrogen that actually protects males in the female during pregnancy is estriol. Weak estrogen, that's what you should be putting in the vagina in, in menopause. Why not? It's, it's safe. You can put it in. And you, lubrication. You're going to hear about sex drive, and, and, and uh, you're going to know that estriol is, is safe. I mean, it's still estrogen, but you've got to keep an eye on the uterus, do a uterine ultrasound. But if you can look at something like, let's say you swallow, you eat a steak, or you eat some red meat, the China study that was just brought up. Estrogen does a very funny thing. It gets, goes from the stomach, goes to the liver. The liver says, uh, I'll package it up in these packages. And these packages happen to be glucarate packages. I'll tell you why that's important. And then it sends it down back into the butt, and back into the bowel. And then it goes down to the bowel, bowel and goes out. So if you're constipated, guess what? You have more time to reabsorb estrogen. Not a good thing. Got lots of water, movement, fiber, uh, well, weight management, exercise, water, movement, it's all good. Africans have 10 times the amount of, of fiber we eat and have one-tenth of bowel cancer incidence that we have. Think about that. So, so we, as long as you can get water, so the good idea is to get the liver healthy. So all the supplements to clean out the liver, the liver should be processing food, not drugs. Now, occasionally you have to put some, some medication in. This guy, Gonzalez in the States, you ever hear this guy talk? You think I talk fast. You should hear this guy talk. I, at 4.30, Carol sees me in front of the TV watching this guy talk, and he was talking faster than I talk. And he said, uh, pancreatin, pancreat is the first enzyme that's secreted by the trophoblast when it comes out saying, you're a liver, you're going to be a heart, you're going to be a, he a brain. Pancreatin, so take your pancreatin, because I'm telling you, don't mess with the pancreas. And so pancreatin, and so anything that helps the liver, I'm in favor of it. Water, healthy food, vegetables, cruciferous vegetables, indole 3 carbonyl, and try and stop this, the bad pathway of cholesterol. By the way, you do need some androstenedione, and you do, it does make hormone. But this, this whole system is multi comp See these three estrogens here? There's about 100 different re places it can go. But you want it to go into estriol, because 20% of your urine, according to Jonathan Wright, 20% of your urine should be estriol. The next one. Vitamin D, not a bad idea. Uh, you can draw a line through the United States, by the way, in the middle of the United States, and everybody above the line has higher breast cancer than everybody below the line. Sun, sunshine, vitamin D. So get a little fresh air, get some sunshine under your, under your tongue. How's our time? How are we doing? Four, five minutes? OK. That's a good five, too. <laughs> next slide. According, that's probably true. And that's probably true. <laughs> and I think with education, when you guys educate your doctors, that number will go up. You guys keep at your doctors. Keep at them. Keep at them. The women, the men, it doesn't matter. Keep at them. Say no. Say, look at this. Read this. Look at this. And, and you've got a lot of very caring physicians. They're just too rushed. They're just too rushed. Naturopaths, homeopaths, got a little time. So that's what you need some time. Next one. We've already said this stuff, yeah. Well, they, this is what they did. So what FEMED did was a double-blind placebo study, and they showed, they proved, that if you take indole-3-carbonyl, guess what? You're going to have a lower incidence of bad estrogen. Bad estrogen and not going to stick around your fat. It's going to come out as, as good estrogen. One more. That's the study, and it, it was a good study. I'll, I'll, you get a handout if you want to get a handout on it. Another one? Is that the last one? Oh, I got, that's it. I got to read something. I got five minutes. You know, I never know. You can't get 40 years of information in, in 45 minutes. Honest to God, it's impossible. But if you want these CDs, or if you want to listen to scientific studies, I've got two hours of CDs. You can get them from uh, Frank Garshowitz has the York Downs Pharmacy. They have my CDs. They have books and books. All in this stuff is all educational stuff. Read it. Absorb it and live it. Live it. And that's what, if you live it, you'll live a lot longer. And I got just one thing to finally say, if, I, if you don't mind, two minutes left, OK? I, when I was, when I was uh, going through my six months of kind of self-introspection, kind of looking for my soul again, I found a passage in a brilliant trilogy by Neil Donald Walt. Walt and, and it said, it went something like this. I'll read it to you. Can you hear me? Use every moment to think the highest thought. Say 
the highest word, do the highest deed. Bring peace to the earth by bringing peace to all. The people that you were meant to touch. Be peace. Feel and experience in every moment your divine connection with the all. And with every person, place, and thing, embrace every circumstance, own every fault, share every joy, contemplate every mystery, walk in every woman and man's shoes, forgive every offense, especially your own, heal every heart, honor every person's truth, adore every person's God, and protect every person's rights, preserve every person's dignity, be a living, breathing example of the highest truth that resides in you. On speaking, speak humbly of yourself, lest somebody think you are merely calling for attention. Speak gently, that all may know love. Speak openly, lest someone thinks you have something to hide. Speak candidly, so you cannot be mistaken. Speak often, so that your word may go truly forth. And speak respectfully, that none be dishonored. Speak lovingly, that every syllable may heal. Make your life a gift. And remember always that you are a gift. And be a gift to everyone that enters your life. And to everyone whose life you enter, be careful not to enter another life unless you can be a gift. And when a person enters your life unexpectedly, look for the gift that person has come to receive from you. And when, my friends, you see this simple truth, that God has sent us nothing but angels. I dedicate this lecture to my angel, Carol. That's the angel that God sent to me. Thank you very much.